Hello, my name is Marnoes Mul and I'm an associate professor at IEC Delft Institute for Water Education. Today I'm going to discuss the considerations and implications for using different spatial skills for monitoring water productivity, starting from the field up to the river basin. We start with a short recap of the concept of water productivity, which is defined as the output derived from the use of water, which can be in terms of biophysical quantities, such as tons or kilogram of biomass or yield, or socio-economic indicators such as jobs or economic value, divided by the water consumption per unit of output. For agriculture performance assessments, the output derived is related to the crop production and then referred to as crop water productivity. Water productivity can therefore be used as an indicator for monitoring and evaluating the performance of crop production systems. However, the choice of what to evaluate, such as yield or income, against what unit of water depends on the type of applications or the assessment. While this is often decided by the user of the assessment, the spatial scale or unit of assessment does provide typical types of applications, as I will illustrate in the next slide. I will describe these different scales of application using the following water productivity components. What is typically considered uh, the production terms, water use terms, the general purpose of the assessment, and typical use of the water productivity assessment at that particular scale. We will investigate the following scales from crop, field, farm to irrigation scheme, and finally closing with the basin scale. The first scale is the scale of the crop. Following agronomic principles, the relationship between transpiration and the biomass production is a linear one under similar climatic and nutrient conditions. For different plant types, such as 3-3 and C4 crops, as can be seen in the right-hand figure. Differences in biomass production can therefore be attributed to stress factors, showing the crop is not performing optimally. Differences in crop water productivity can also indicate stress factors that have affected the harvest index, considered the harvestable yield of a crop. While this information is of theoretical interest to plant physiologists, farmers can use it, also use this information practically to see if and where there is room to improve the productivity of their crops. One major setback of this analysis is the limitation for measuring transpiration. The second scale is the field scale, where the biophysical output is compared to the total water consumed through transpiration and evaporation. It can provide insights into the stress factors affecting biomass production or the harvest index, but it can also provide insight into the ratio of transpiration, which contributes to biomass production, over evaporation, which is the non-productive component. This information can both be of interest theoretically for crop and soil scientists, while farmers can use the information to understand the improvements that can be made by reducing the non-beneficial evaporation. At the farm level, the produce in relation to water supplied or irrigation supply and its economic return are important to farmers, and it directly influences farmers' decisions, as their interest is to increase the harvestable yield or economic return of the water supply. At the irrigation scheme level, the focus is on returning on irrigation deliveries at scheme level, but also looking at the spatial distribution of water productivity and other irrigation performance. This is important for information for irrigation managers responsible for water distribution. And finally, at basin scale, where economic water productivity is a key element of the concept of integrated water resources management, which focuses on the economic return of water use, water productivity assessments can inform water allocation decisions, also in comparison to water use in other sectors. The Sustainable Development Goal 6.4 is also a global indicator for water use efficiency, uh, which evaluates water use efficiency of the different sectors into one indicator for river basin or national level monitoring. Now to the practical side of water productivity assessment and the sources of information typically used for these assessments. For the crop and field scale, data is generally obtained from field measurements, from harvest data for the production component to sap flow or flux towers, estimate transpiration and evapotranspiration. Since this requires expensive data collection, crop growth models can be used for water productivity assessments as well. 
At the larger scale from forest to irrigation scheme data for the production component can be obtained for field measurements, but increasingly satellite observations are used not only to provide aggregated product amounts, production amounts, but also to obtain spatial and temporal variations. For the water use components, the field observation from direct flow measurements are increasingly being replaced or more accurately complemented by satellite observations for the evapotranspiration or water use component. To conclude, water productivity assessments can provide relevant information for various types of stakeholders at different scales. While detailed assessments for crop, field, farm level require expensive and time consuming datasets, Remote sensing provides new opportunities for cheaper and quicker large-scale assessments. Thank you for your attention.